Hey guys, welcome back. It's so good to see you again. In this video, we're gonna talk about waterfalls. So grab yourself a cup of coffee and get ready. This one is packed. Who doesn't love waterfalls? And why are they so mesmerizing anyway? Why is it that we'll drive miles and plan entire vacations around the event of seeing a waterfall? More on that in just a little bit, but today I wanna to share with you a few tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way that will really help you when you're out shooting these unique landscapes that fall into a category um, all to their own, no pun intended. First off, I'll assume that you already own a DSLR or a mirrorless system and you're familiar with the basics of photography. But even if you have the latest, greatest gear, I actually want you to start here with this. Now I'm not meaning don't take your camera, but I'm saying take this along with you. And when you make it to your destination with your wonderful waterfall, the first thing I want you to do is put down all of your gear except this. And I want you to walk around that falls, get intimate with it. Climb up on a rock and go up on a ledge around the fall. Look down into it. Look at it from different angles. And as you're exploring the falls and you're listening and you're looking and you're looking at different light and how it's coming in, pay attention to those moments that make you go, wow, and learn how to dial into that frequency because if you're standing in a spot that makes you go, wow, chances are that's a great composition and you may want to put that on your list to shoot. Now, pick up this. Too many times we get so excited. I know, I know, I'm there too with you. But too many times we're excited to get this camera out and start shooting and put it on a tripod and lock ourselves down. But with the freedom of this phone, we can completely use this as a composition preview tool or camera to go around and size up compositions and see what they're really gonna look like before we even get into our camera. And this takes time to set these legs up. This is fast. We can go around and nail different compositions. We can even put it in panoramic mode and wipe the entire scene and get an idea of what it could look like once we stitch a panoramic shot together. So now let's talk about setting up your big camera, okay? The next thing I want to talk about is a circular polarizer. Do not leave home without this, okay? Just don't. Often when we're shooting waterfalls, there's lots of wet surfaces. There's mossy rocks and logs and things that are down there. And all those wet surfaces create glare. So with a circular polarizer, you can actually dial in how much of that glare that you wanna keep for definition and then also how much of that texture beneath the water you wanna reveal. You can cut through some of that glare and see the rocks and the definition of the, the textures that are underneath. And then next, you may wanna look at using a neutral density filter. I just got this one from Breakthrough Photography. I absolutely love their products. They're packaged like tanks. I mean, when you get these things, this is the X4 ND, this is a 10 stop ND. They're not paying me to say this, but I just am a fan of their products because they're packaged so well. They're just absolutely fantastic quality. And with a neutral density filter, sometimes, you know, these waterfalls, the white water, it's so bright it could go nuclear. So having that ND filter gives you a lot more latitude to dial back those highlight areas and even extend your shutter speed on up to upwards of 8 to 10 seconds and 15 second exposures sometimes if you want. Another tip I've learned is to nail your focus before putting your ND filter on. Once you have your polarizer set, and you know exactly what shot you want. Now take that time to really dial in that minutia of focus and get it exactly the way you want. Because if you put the ND filter on, especially with these mirrorless cameras, you know, you're gonna have to crank the ISO up just to be able to get a preview. And then you're trying to focus through all the little dancing noise and stuff that can be going on, especially in the shadows. So what I like to do is set the camera up, find my composition, put that polarizer on there, nail my focus, 
then put the ND filter on and start working through my shutter, okay? So then that brings up another point is you got to have a really awesome tripod. And Hudson Henry turned me on to uh, Robus as a brand. I'd never even heard of that until I heard it on one of his videos. But I got the Robus 8880, and this thing is absolutely a beast. It goes up to like 81 inches tall, but it's only six and a half pounds. I know that might be a little bit heavier than some of those travel tripods, but if it feels a little bit too heavy for you, just quit whining and go to the gym. Because if you're in a waterfall with eight inches of rushing water going over you, you're really gonna be glad when you're there that you pack that extra weight around because you've got to have stability with your camera. And if that water's going against the legs of your tripod, it can introduce a little bit of shake and vibration. You gotta be really, really selective with where you put your tripod also because you don't want the, the tripod to be slowly slipping on a slick surface and then suddenly fall as you're taking a shot. Just be super, super careful when you're shooting around waterfalls because I don't have to tell you that it can get a little sketchy. And lastly, my biggest piece of advice today on shooting waterfalls is to give yourself permission to shoot multiple exposures in order to collect all the ingredients you need for your final composition. You heard me right. I said you can do that. I'm giving you permission. Okay. Maybe your waterfall scene's kind of complex where you've got a rock in the foreground. It's super close to the camera. You may want to shoot three exposures. Go ahead and get your waterfall and your background. Then shoot another one where you're focused about a third of the way into the scene. And then take another shot with your rock in the foreground in focus. And then in post, you can layer those together and make the whole shot look and appear as sharp focus. Another thing you may want to do is take multiple shutter speeds so that you can experiment with getting that silky water look and then in post-production be able to layer and adjust how much texture you actually have in the water. Sometimes I've dragged the shutter out too long and it just goes into the silk of no return. You know, it's like a 15 second exposure and then we're getting into that almost looks like fog because it's just so smooth. There's no texture left and it's just a personal taste thing. Play with your shutter. Give yourself multiple exposures and ingredients so that when you're back in the edit suite, you'll have everything you need for that wonderful composition you're after. Now, earlier this year, I got to visit Price's Falls near Davis, Oklahoma, but we had had tons of rain. And so Price's Falls was flowing. It was absolutely pouring water out of every possible little tributary and it was calm, the conditions were perfect, overcast skies, nothing was moving, all the trees were perfectly still. Or so I thought. I grossly underestimated though the amount of power coming from the water to create its own wind, okay? So the waterfall was making wind and blowing the little leaves and foliage that were close to the falls. Well, I did have multiple exposures cause I bracketed that on kind of an HDR. So I did have a few shots and I was able to salvage it in Photoshop, but I went back on a mission because I got this little idea of what if I did my panorama with my slow shutter speed and got that silky water that I wanted, you know, had the polarizer dialed in and everything. And then what if I actually did another repeat panorama, but with a really fast shutter speed? to really freeze all those little leaves in place. I was thinking maybe like 1 25th or even a 200th of a second to freeze that foliage. So that's what I try. And this is yet one more way that you can utilize multiple exposures to really get the effect that you're looking for. So here's how that would work. Right here, I actually have my Falls Creek waterfall shot. Okay, and you can see over here on my layers that I actually have a duplicate of one that I had already done some work on. That's, this is simply another duplicate of this layer. And what I'm gonna do is make a layer mask on top of that, and it reveals this. And I just used auto-align layers to make sure that these two layers were stacked up perfectly on top of each other. So then, if you kind of zoom in here, I'll show you kind of how this works. Right here, 
these are the leaves that I'm talking about. See the power of that waterfall to kind of move to move these leaves? I mean, look at that. These are just blowing, not because of any wind outside, it's just because of the wind from the waterfall. So I'm gonna grab a brush, I'm gonna increase the size, and I'm gonna decrease the hardness somewhere right in there. I'm gonna make sure that my opacity is at 100. And then what I can do is go over and mask out the blurred shot. And what I'm doing is just simply revealing that other shot that's beneath. See, I'm almost kind of like painting in the sharp leaves that were taken with a different exposure. And sure, there's a little more grain in there. If you wanted to go and like pixel peep on those, you could see that they're a little more grainy, but we're not gonna get all bent out of shape about that, okay? The thing is with this effect, you can make those leaves a little more crispy. You can find areas that are blurry and you're almost just like painting in the blurred areas so that they're not blurry anymore. Now, another thing that I like to do while we're on this layer mask, remember this shot underneath was taken at a different shutter speed and so there's a little more texture in the water. Now that's not a good quality shot because I had to crank the ISO and uh, get the shutter into that 125th or 200th of a second realm. But if we wanted to introduce a little bit more texture, what I may do is increase my brush size just a little bit and I'll go up here to opacity and I'll take it down to maybe like 28 or 30 and then you can sort of start painting over top of those real silky areas like look at this area there's almost no definition in this area and I can kind of paint back in the scene and if you if you go too much like say you reveal too much you can just go back to white as your color and non-destructively put it back. I love using layer masks because instead of using an eraser tool, if you go too far, you can always dial it back and bring back the part that you had sort of quote unquote erased, you know? So really your final composition is only limited by your imagination and how many layers you bring into Photoshop with all those ingredients. So play around with that and have some fun with it. Now let's talk about the adventure side of shooting waterfalls. Recently I had a chance to go to my hometown of Paintsville, Kentucky. Wow, would you look at this? I'm at my parents' house in Kentucky and it's pouring right now. There's literally hailstones coming down and we just had this gust of wind that was crazy. I started to shoot this a few minutes ago, but unfortunately I, I brought the camera out and immediately the lens fogged up. See what I mean? It's almost like someone came up and went on the lens. You can't see anything, which right now may be okay. That may be a good thing, but you got to let your lenses acclimate and not leave them in an air conditioned ice box of a house in eastern Kentucky when it's damp and wet and humid like it is today, your lenses are going to fog up and then you're going to be waiting and missing great shots because your lens is like, I got to sit here and defog for like 30 minutes. Not good. So I'm really excited right now that this happened because when you get a downpour on this scale, in Eastern Kentucky, what happens? What do you get? You get amazing little waterfalls. And there's one waterfall in particular that I really wanna check out. It's called Little Mud Lick Falls. So this is Little Mud Lick Creek. And this is barely off of the road, parked right up the hill. And already this is a photographer's paradise down here. The way the rain came through and, and made this mist down, look at this. There, a few minutes ago, there was shafts of, of sunlight coming down. I tried to get a, a shot of it, but I was so excited to start this vlog that I just threw the camera on the tripod and started recording. But I'm gonna take my chances on moving down the, the stream. I may go ahead and shoot a couple of shots here, but I'm gonna take my chances on going down the stream to really try to get this waterfall. And hopefully we'll get some of that same light with the mist and the, the shafts of sunlight coming through. 
So let's just see what happens. But isn't this place absolutely epic? I didn't actually get the shot that I had hoped for from Little Mudlick Falls. I did get a pretty cool drone shot as that storm slid off and you could see the rain coming out of it. But by the time we got to Little Mudlick Falls, the sun was getting lower in the sky and those beautiful shafts of light that were cutting through the trees were overshooting the falls and I couldn't really incorporate those into a composition. So I just, I just got there too late. But you know, the other part of it, as, as much as I wanted to just take this camera and run down into Little Mud Lick Falls and just start shooting my compositions, I couldn't. It was too dangerous. This was the definition of sketch, okay? There was rock cliffs, it was slick. You could go off a steep hill. I mean, this was as steep as a horse's face, as we would say. And you could fall. And so I had to take my time to get down there. Have you ever noticed Anytime there's beauty, there's always an element of danger that goes along with it. Risk. In order to approach beauty, God has this world designed that we have to put something at risk to seek that beauty, to seek His beauty. We have to put it all on the line. And the most beautiful places in the entire world are the most dangerous. Look at the Nepali coast of Hawaii. Look at the Grand Canyon. You know, some of the most beautiful places in the world, and I doubt anyone would argue with me on those, are the most dangerous. You could die in numerous ways there. I know of a beach. If you look up the world's most dangerous beach, you'll probably come up with the one that I saw on the Nepali coast. There's a little sign there that says, warning, no swimming. Dangerous undercurrent will take you out and 800 feet deep in less than a minute. But there's little hash marks of all the people that have ignored that warning and died there. Over 88, 88 people, I believe, as far as, you know, when I was there in 2005. But that's just the nature of, of beauty. It's, it's dangerous. God is dangerous. I remember over 18 years ago when I approached this mysterious girl that was standing next to me in an ice cream shop. It was dangerous. I felt the danger. I felt the risk of uttering those first words to her. It kind of worked out for me pretty well, I'll have to say. But there, I did feel the danger. Beauty brings with it danger, and Little Mud Lick Falls was no exception. And as I looked around the falls, I had to put myself into compromising situations to find compositions. At one point, which from one of my, my three shots that I actually got from that, that excursion, my favorite shot, I actually have another crop from that. I was up on this rock, and it was, one spot I could put my foot to hold myself up the entire time. There was only one place. If I put my foot anywhere else, I could fall straight off a cliff into the falls. And I got this composition and I was trying to frame it. There was a tree that had some fungus growing on it that was colorful and it looked pretty cool. And I thought about using it to kind of frame up the falls. But really what ended up happening was that Little Mud Lick Falls was kind of like Cinderella. Well, this was the evil stepsister, this tree. And it was like the stepsister coming into the frame doing an Irish clogging dance in the corner. It was like stealing all of the attention away from the falls. But that's also part of our adventure as landscape photographers. We have to kind of chase those compositions. We may have to go back to that location. We may have to go back in another season. We may even have to come back numerous years, year after year, to get those conditions right. And I missed the best light that I saw all week on Little Mud Lick Falls because I got there too late. And I did not see those conditions again the entire time I was there. But I wanna challenge you to just keep after it. Get out and shoot waterfalls and just keep going back to those same locations. And sooner or later, you know, God's been working on these locations for centuries before we came along. Stands to reason, 
they'll probably be around a few more years, God willing, we are, and we have cameras and uh, equipment so that we can go shoot them. I hope this has been helpful. Please subscribe to my channel and click that little bell so that you'll know the next time I go live with an episode. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you again on the next episode.